These are seven famous Asian dishes that everybody loves, but are actually invented in America. Does orange chicken count as Asian food? Maybe it does because it's delicious, but not top suey. That's not that good. Um, we got to talk about it because this article says these American-born Asian cuisines <laughs> represent immigrant ingenuity, cultural exchange, and in many cases, adaptation. And there is a discussion in the comment section, Andrew. Should these count as authentic Asian food or not because they're authentic to the Asian American experience even though you cannot find them in Asia. All right, guys, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. One thing that is Asian and made in America and kind of made for everyone, but, you know, made with Asian taste buds in mind is Smala. Sold out right now, but check it out, Smala. Hey, from Sichuan to Sicily. Interestingly enough, Andrew, Smala, it goes well on these Asian American dishes but also Asian, Asian dishes. Mm. Um, let's lead off, Andrew, with orange chicken. Made in America. They said that it is based <coughs> off loosely a Hunan dish, which is called Changji, which uses dried citrus peels. However, the modern day iteration that is essentially like orange soda, Fanta, and chicken nuggets mixed together was invented in the 1980s by the head chef at Panda Express. Very delicious, though. I will say this. Kind of tastes like candy. Uh, I will say this. This is the one, almost one of the most universally loved Asian American right. dishes. You can't go against this one. All right, David. Now, not all the dishes are Chinese. What's the next one? Uh, the California roll. And there was a lot of debate about who invented it. Was it LA? Was it Vancouver? Um, but basically, invented in the 1960s, got imitation crab in it, avocado, cucumber. Yeah, you can't tell me that when you go to very authentic Japanese spots, they don't really have imitation crab. I don't know. Is that a thing? Was no, that made? They would in... rather put real crab. In. Yeah, but was that? I don't know where imitation crab comes from. I want to say it was way cheaper, and also some Americans only eat imitation crab, which is actually made from fish. Exactly. So California roll is obviously designed for Americans. By the way, I think mm. these dishes we have to note, although they were invented and made by Asian people in America or in North America, that they were kind of making this catering to the American taste buds. Yes, yes, yes. Most of these recipes were concocted in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Obviously, orange chicken probably being the last one made up in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Since the 80s, Andrew, people have been leaning more into renditions, like one-to-one -one copies of dishes from Asia. Right. So, David, one of the other old-school ones is chop suey. This is not a dish that I think even a lot of Chinese restaurants serve today. Well, it's really just a concept. Right. Chop suey. Chop suey in Cantonese just means just whatever you have left over, chopped up, throw it in a wok. Right. I mean, technically, I guess if you take leftovers and you just chop stuff up and you stir fry it, it is chop suey in some way. But no one is going to order chop suey in probably most cities in America. Right. Uh they said it emerged in 1884 in Chinatown's SF, New York. I heard. Now, that, I believe, chop suey, I'm not sure if that was designed only for Americans, but even for maybe the Asian community, the Chinese community at that time. They said that uh, people were even eating it in the uh, the gold mines because you just had the scraps left over. Right. So you it's just kind of like a kind of born out of struggle. I mean, it is sort of like throwing everything into a crock pot in a Western sense. That's sometimes what people used to do with fried rice. Fried rice used to, you can see fried rice as kind of less, well, you know, you take the leftover thing and you put it in rice and egg and there you go. Uh, General So's chicken is up next. Andrew, this one is like more heavily debated. General So, he was supposed to be a Hunan chef. A lot of Hunan influence in this stuff more mm. than you think. And, uh, Basically, a lot of people argue over who created it. <coughs> What's your opinion on General Tso's? For me, I'm way more of an orange chicken guy. Uh, we just recently got General Tso's, though. We were at the Pittsburgh airport, and we got some of Chai's Pittsburgh fusion cuisine. No, because they're still more into, like, the old school 1970s recipes over and, there. And remember what she told us, because we asked the lady, we said, hey, how come you don't serve orange chicken here? But she was serving General Tso's and chicken and broccoli, and then she goes, well, actually, you know, it's uh, Panda Express serves the orange chicken, so we don't want to compete. We just specialize yeah. in the general sows. And if, I thought their general sows was really good. If you think about Pittsburgh, Andrew, it's so throwback. She's like, no, 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 that's too modern. The orange chicken is too cutting edge. Just keep it general sows. Uh, they, apparently, they didn't update that to the 80s firmware yet. Uh, Crab Rangoon mm. actually emerged from a Polynesian tiki-style restaurant called Trader Vic's in the 1950s, there was an Asian-American chef who was working for a white guy called Joe Young, and he basically took cream cheese and he put it in a wonton wrapper, 
wrapped it up Friday, called it Yangon, which was at that time the capital of Burma, but nowadays Rangoon. This one, the story of the crab Rangoon is always very interesting to me because it's not just Chinese. It's like at a Polynesian tiki restaurant, but named after a Burmese city. White owner, a white Chinese owner. American yeah. chef who was probably Toy Sonic. And then now Crab Rangoon is sold everywhere, even at super Americanized Thai restaurants and Chinese restaurants. I believe Trader Joe's has Crab Rangoon. Oh, yeah. No, they're pretty good, honestly. Uh, Trader Joe's, Andrew, tiki-themed. They have a lot of, like, these 1930s dishes. But this next one is not served by Trader Joe's. Whoa. Ed Fu Young was invented in the Ooh. 1930s. It's been around for 100 years. Um, it's a pancake filled with eggs, vegetables, meat, and seafood. They said they invented it at the St. Zo- uh, Louis, Missouri in 1930. This dish is low-key actually kind of good. I've had it before for the first time. I think I had it like five years ago. I'll tell you this. This dish actually, actually, David, it, we you would see it sometimes at the larger Chinese buffets back in the day. Like this was like when we were growing up. Probably not anymore. No, and I would never get it because it just looked like a pile of eggs. But actually, as I got older, I think I might even appreciate this dish a little bit more. Right. Which is funny. Even though I'm, it's not like a dish I'll look out for. I'm just saying... If there's a good fresh egg foo young and I happen to be at that buffet, I might take a scoop. It's better than people think. Yeah. Uh, moving on, Andrew, we've got the fortune cookie. Mm. Fortune cookie actually invented by a Japanese immigrant, Mikado Hagiwara, in the early 1900s. <clears throat> but then it has become associated with Chinese cuisine. Yeah. Uh, we looked into this. They have been eating these as part of a Shinto ritual for hundreds of years in Japan, but they only eat it once a year for New Year's. Right, and there is no Confucius saying inside, I don't think. Right. Right. But but you know what's funny, David? This is one of the two main food things that gets accredited to Chinese that's actually from Japan. You know what the other one is? MSG. A ja- Ajimoto, that's the, that's the main MSG brand. It was invented in Japan, but obviously... Chinese restaurants kind of get the bad rep for it. Anyways, guys. Um, I will say this. There's a couple things that got left off this list. Andrew, in the South and in the Midwest, they like bourbon chicken. Okay. I, I want to say that was invented possibly in the 90s. Bourbon chicken is like essentially grilled chicken, but it's kind of served at the Asian buffets There may be some in slight the Asian barbecue sauce in there mixed in with the regular But it's not that sauce. Asian of a dish. It's not that Asian. Uh, uh, you know what else is in there? Almond chicken? Almond chicken and cashew chicken. Wow. But you know why a lot of people don't know about those? Some of these, like, dishes, they only stayed in that region. Like, kind of. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, in the some, Midwest or something like that. I mean, that. I think it goes the same for lemon chicken, all these other... Right, lemon chicken, that's not from China. Right. I know in um, parts of Canada, they eat strawberry beef. Yeah. Or they eat, like, tangerine beef or something like but, that. Like, basically, these are, like, regional so, things. Like, So these are... Dish is kind of designed to serve the American market and American taste buds. And we're going to talk about American taste buds. But I want to shout out to some Asian Asian dishes that were invented in America for other Asians in America. You mean these are Asian enclave dishes that don't exist in the motherland? Yeah, like these weren't invented in Asia, but they were made for the Asian community in America. Scallion pancake beef roll from Taiwanese, which is you the- You talk about the neuro drenbing. Neuro drenbing, one of my favorite foods. It originally based off this uh, chunbing from Shandong, where they just got this big ass green onion in it, but then they added beef and hoisin and other things. Right, they kind of made it a sandwich. LA Kalbi, which is the short rib Kalbi. As in Korea, they didn't start eating that short rib Kalbi until LA did. LA came up with it. You mean with the bone in it? Yes. And then short rib pho, I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, that was invented in America where we have the big beef ribs. Don't you want to say that that was just invented like 10 years ago? Yeah, that's a pretty recently new thing. And then any Asian buffet in America kind of is sort of for Asians, but sort of for Americans anyways. Anyways, David... Uh, what is your major takeaway before we get into the comment section? Um, I'll say this, man. It's really interesting to see different <clears throat> like age ranges of people in their relationship with American invented Asian foods. Some people think they're legit. Some people think they're not legit. And other people are just being more sensible where it's like, I just enjoy it when I like it and I'm feeling really American. But hell no, it's not authentic Asian so, food. No. Because it was originally <clears throat> conceived to cater to make money. Right. So it's kind of like, how do you, so how traditional or authentic of Chinese food are these dishes or are they fake Chinese food? I don't really agree with the 
term fake Chinese food, but it's definitely not authentic Chinese food. Yeah, it could still be good, but obviously it's done with a completely different philosophy in mind. Typically, older <laughs> Americans, Andrew, from the 1950s, 60s, 70s, their palates are very simple. It's like post-war, World War II. They want just something sweet. Yeah, I like that sweet chicken. They give me that yeah, orange because, chicken. Yeah. Give me that make, orange make chicken. It's like a Kit Kat bar. You know what I, what I like to do? I like to take them crab rangoons and then dip them in the orange chicken sauce. So now I got orange right. chicken crab rangoons. It, it's not like what a stereotypical or even a typical like Asian taste palate enjoys. Mm -hmm. But so I guess what I'm saying is like, how could it be authentic if it was catered for somebody else? That doesn't right. make any no, sense. No, I don't. That's I don't, like an Italian saying that the Chinese durian pizzas are authentic. Yeah, it can be good. You can enjoy it, but hell no, that's not a real pizza to somebody from Italy. Well, even the Philly cheesesteak pizza is not authentic. Um, I think, yeah. I mean, anyways, guys, food doesn't need a label. Yeah, obviously, I think people, most people are past the point of calling like orange chicken authentic Chinese food. Just call it Western Chinese food, Western Asian food, Americanized Asian but, food. But you know what I realized? There are a few people, and I feel like they're like dwindling nowadays as America becomes more like closer to Asia. But people who only care, they care more about Asian American culture than Asian culture. Like, you know, there's a few Asian Americans that like still fall into that. And they were arguing, they were like, you know what, this, it doesn't even matter. You can't gatekeep what's authentic. And I'm like, no, just say you like it and it's inauthentic because yeah. you can gatekeep what is authentic. Literally, there have of why can't you gatekeep what is authentic? Yeah, yeah, no. I so as far as gatekeeping, that's legit. Like you can gatekeep because if it's not authentic, it's not authentic. But that doesn't mean it's bad and whack and that we shouldn't eat it. Right. That's what I mean. Like I eat inauthentic Mexican food all the time. Right, you like some hard shell tacos? I like some hard... Taco I, time? I still eat Taco Bell to this day sometimes. Mexi nuggets? Is that... Would a uh, person from Puebla, Mexico, walk into Taco Bell and recognize any of the dishes? Recognize maybe like 2% of the menu. Right, but that, that, it doesn't... It could be valid, but no, it's not authentic. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Um, California rolls are from Canada. A lot of people were arguing about it, who invented it. The Philadelphia roll, Andrew, interestingly enough, was based off Philadelphia cream cheese rather than the city. Yeah. Because there's nothing really like Philly about it. Because, Andrew, a Philadelphia roll should have Philly cheesesteaks in it. But shouldn't... Isn't Philadelphia cream cheese from Philadelphia? Uh, it's not, but it was invented in Philadelphia, weirdly enough. Um, uh. Some people were arguing about orange chicken. All right, here's the thing. Well, well, what's or the argument no, about orange they're chicken? They're saying that Panda Express didn't invent it. And okay. I'm saying this. I believe Panda Express, in terms of the gigantic meat chunks, where it tastes like chicken McNuggets mixed with orange Fanta, they invented it, that version that popped oh. off. They might not have invented the idea of obviously putting sweet orange peel in with meat and okay. then frying it. Uh, people were talking about how, man, the only thing that people know from Burma is the crab rangoon. But right. then obviously nobody eats like tea leaf salad or mohinga, right? Right, right, right. But it's, it's growing. It's growing. Um, people were just saying, man, chop suey was just invented everywhere around the world because every Chinatown, even the old ones in the Philippines <clears throat> from like 1600s, because mm. Chinese have been in the Philippines for a really long time, mm. uh, they got chop suey too. You know what I appreciate and I'm coming to appreciate about chop suey, General So's, crab rangoons, and egg foo young on this list is that those actually have Asian words in them. Well, it's based off... Chop suey is literally... Cantonese, yeah. Yeah, it's, so it's literally based off the Chinese word. Orange chicken, those are two English words where I'm saying you're making other people say, and these are considered borrow words from a, 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 a culture where those are Chinese words. Like, so, TSO, imagine how hard that was for the first time when, when like a white, like an American was trying to get general to so's. How do we say that general? Right, because so the T and the S is just not in the English language. Yeah, the T and the S is like, it's supposed to be switched. So you just kind of, oh, you just kind of make the, drop the T. But anyways. Can I get some general TSO? Um, so ultimately, that. you know, do you think there's going to be more American Asian dishes invented like this in the future? Or are we now really on just porting things directly over from Asia. Oh, okay. So one, I think we are porting a lot of food straight from Asia, from the Asian chains. Yeah, because there's a lot more like international trade, yeah. right? You can get the ingredients now. Yeah, literally. There's no more I mean, embargo on Sichuan peppercorns. These brands are coming from China over here. So, but I also think that there's more 
any new kind of Asian dishes, I do think have more Asians in mind. Like no one's just catering purely to American taste buds anymore. You know what I mean? Right. Like obviously when we made small ass sauce, like I do want everybody to like it, but we did make it with Asians in mind. It had to satisfy the Asian market where it's like maybe orange chicken, when they made it, they were like, Bayonet Express was like, hey, you know, like if we make this dish and, you know, maybe the real Chinese people, they don't really eat it, but everybody else likes it. It's okay. But it's like, we would need Asians to approve this. Right. Yes. So, I mean, I think there's just a, I think the whole argument about authentic, what's inauthentic, I think you need to still be able to hold on and be like, yo, this is from the motherland or this came from the motherland. So this is authentic. But at the end of the day, enjoy what you like, man. Cause I'll tell you this, when I see a Panda Express at the airport, I even see a little Manchu walk, a little China walk express. I'm curious, you know I am. Yeah, well, because it's kind of appearing to somebody else's like a boomer, old, non-Asian, or a white person's view on your culture. Because these spots are catering to non-Asians that are like 50 and up. Yeah. If you're 50 and up in America, chances are you're probably white. Yeah. Right? So I'm saying that, you know how like all those old movies where they're like, my darling little egg foo young, little wonton strip or whatever. You know what I mean? Where, like where I'm saying that those are all the words that they know from their firmware update well, that yeah. they're stuck on. Well, yeah. Well, now Americans might know Mala. It's Mala. Might know but Mala. Yeah. because 30 and under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 30 and under. But in the cities. But anyways, guys, uh, let us know what you think in the comments down below. This is not the most serious topic, to be honest. But I do think that you, there is a sense of gatekeeping. It's not to say gatekeeping as in like other people can't participate, but labels have labels for a reason. And it's like, dude, inauthentic, yeah. authentic. It could still be delicious. It could still yeah. go with your flavor palette, your exactly. tongue morsels or whatever. But yeah, like sometimes once in a while I meet an authentic Asian dish that I'm not the biggest fan of and that I might even prefer the Americanized version of with a few dishes. Yeah? Yeah. So that's not... I'm admitting that, but I'm also saying like, uh, hey, I know what it is. Would you take orange chicken over Changji from Hunan? Which is have, not even that popular. Have we even had that? I don't even know if I've had that. I had it. It doesn't, it doesn't have It probably doesn't hit as hard. It, it doesn't sweet. taste like orange soda, yeah. Yeah, anyways. I mean, obviously the sweetness hits you and the insulin spikes and your taste buds go crazy and it's fried chicken. Anyways, guys, let us know in the comments down below what you think. Oh, last thing I wanted to say. If you guys want to try some authentic Chinese food, from a province that tastes like American Chinese food on a flavor palette wise thing, but a more elevated version, try some Dongbei food. Oh yeah. Dongbei food from Northeastern China tastes like a more advanced version of American Chinese food yeah. from a, like a weird, uh, like the like tongue zone level. You're saying the sweet and sour pork chops. Like yeah, guobao ro. Yeah. Guoba ro. And then if you've ever had the Korean Chinese version of it, which is tong su yuk, it's like, it's kind of tastes like an Americanized Chinese dish. Like it's very sweet, syrupy, and it's fried pork. Hey, the nomads like it simple. The nomads yeah, yeah. like it simple. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.